Recently we implemented the validation for the horizontals and verticals and now we can focus on the diagonals. Therefore I have two variations. The first one is a very primitive one that I came up with by myself without any research. Although this is probably not the best solution I want to show it anyway just to guide you through my personal thought process. And the second one is a code snippet that I found on the internet and this one performs all the validations at once by using multiple for loops. After that the project is almost finished. We only have to add a few small things. For example we still have to cover the case where the board is completely filled and neither player has won and then we might do some refactoring of our code. As an addition to the series we could for example add animations. So if you wish this series to continue then let me know in the comments below. But for now let's bring this series to an end and enjoy the video and also enjoy my new intro. Welcome to my contribution to IT and software development. If you think this is worth supporting, please take a moment and subscribe to this channel. As I would like to improve continuously, I am grateful for any kind of feedback, so don't hesitate to comment down below. Further information about the video can always be found in the video description. Enjoy the video and now let's get into some syntactical operations. First of all, let's talk about why the validation of the diagonals is so much harder than the vertical or horizontal one. In case of the vertical validation, the lists are already accessible very easily because the board itself is a list of seven sublists which represent the columns. So all we have to do is to loop through those columns and check if there is a connection of four coins of the same color. In case of the horizontal validation, we take the same seven sublists, but this time we transform those lists to a new list of lists which represent the rows instead of the columns. In both of those cases, the lists that we loop through have all the same length, and this is different when it comes to the diagonals. So there's really no pattern that you could adapt to, and that's why I decided to first determine the amount of diagonals that we have to check. Then we have to memorize the coordinates of every cell that we need in order to use those to create individual lists for every diagonal. If we have a closer look on the diagonals then we can see there are some diagonals that can contain only less than four coins so this one can be removed. This leaves a total of 12 diagonals and for each one of them we need the cell's coordinates so the column and row and as you can see there are two types of diagonals one goes upwards and one goes downwards. Let's have a look on our play column method. There's a lot of stuff that should be separated out into another method because as the name of this function already says, this one is responsible for inserting coins into a column. So all this stuff here should be cut out into another method. Let's create a method which we call declare winner and this one creates a default dialog. The title of it will first check if winner is one and if so then the string will be yellow one otherwise it will be red one. Next let's get to the content. Here we create a cell with the current cell mode of winner equals one. So we check again if the winner is one and if so, then the cell mode will be yellow, otherwise it will be red. Right after closing the default dialog, we want the game to reset. Now we need another variable. This one will be a global variable, int winner, and this one is by default zero. And let's create a simple reset game method and this one will just trigger the build board method. This one is a little bit more explanatory. Let's also create a method which checks if the board is full. This one returns a boolean. 
and we have to loop through the columns of the board and then we loop through each cell inside of the column or the values inside of the column and if the value that we are currently looking at equals zero and zero means the cell is empty then we return false otherwise we return true so if there's a zero inside our board then we return that the board is not full and if there's no zero then we return true and the board is full now inside the play column method let's comment all of this stuff out and instead we say winner equals check diagonal later on we will add also the other methods but now let's focus on the diagonals so the diagonal method which does not exist at the moment will return either 0 1 or 2 and after that we check if winner does not equal 0 then we declare the winner so only if we have a winner we declare it and at the very bottom here we add another if statement which checks if the board is full and if so then we create another default dialog which we get from the get package with a title of draw nobody won and the content is a cell with the cell mode or with the color of white so the cell mode empty and then we also reset the game so now whenever the board is completely full we get a message which tells us draw nobody won and the game gets reset so now let's create this check diagonal method let's do that right below the check verticals this will also return an integer check diagonal and or diagonals so as i already explained we need six diagonal lists for the diagonals that go downwards and six for those which go upwards and now we have to get the cell value of each of those diagonals and put them inside the lists therefore we need another method which we call get cell value this one also returns an integer get cell value and this one needs the column number and the row number and now we just return the value of the specific cell by providing the column number and the row number save that and now we can continue we now have to use the get cell value method to fill all of those lists up don't be shocked this is very ugly yes um, we have all the coordinates for the cells that depend on a certain diagonal and we get the value of the cells and put them into the new lists and we do this for every single cell later on we will use a more efficient way the lists are now filled up and we need to group them in another list which we call diagonals in order to loop through them so inside this loop we take the current diagonal and create a string by using the join method and then we check if the string contains four ones or four twos otherwise we return zero yeah and this is it now it should work so let's save and restart and now let's try if this is working and as you can see it works perfectly fine let's see what happens if the board gets completely filled as you can see also the draw function or the board is full function works perfectly fine all the functions that our game needs are implemented and the project itself could be considered as finished 
Nevertheless, some of our code is a bit ugly, so I would like to demonstrate you an alternative, which is a function that is capable of validating in all directions at once. I already added it as a final piece to our project so that I can focus more on explaining what this function is doing. So let's have a look on it step by step. At the very top of this function, we have two variables which are constants and those two variables represent the board's dimensions. So if you think of the board as a system of coordinates, then we have an x-axis which is the max x variable and a y-axis which goes to the top from the bottom to the top and this one is the max y variable. We have a list of lists of integers called directions and this one holds four lists with two integers. The first one is for the horizontal direction from left to right. Then we have a diagonal downwards direction. So from the x-axis we go one step to the right and from the and on the y-axis we go one step down. So this goes diagonal downwards. And then we have the diagonal upwards. So one to the right, one to the top. And we have vertical upwards. So these directions are like pointers which point to the direction. If you have a look into our inner two for loops, then you can see there's an x variable and also a y variable, which is zero. So our starting point, whenever we call this function is zero, zero. And if you think of a pointer, which goes from zero, zero to one, zero, then this pointer would be horizontal and it would be pointing to the right. And from 0, 0 to 1, minus 1, it would be pointing diagonal downwards. So that's the logic behind these directions. And as you can see, we have three loops. The first one is our direction loop. So whenever we call the check victory method, we loop through all the four directions. And because we are going from left to right, we don't need to have additional directions which uh, go to the left or diagonal downwards to the left or yeah. The second loop is for moving on the horizontal, so on the x-axis and inside the horizontal loop we have another loop which is responsible for moving on the vertical dimension. Inside this loop we save the last cells that we can reach so if we are on zero zero then our last cell on the x-axis would be three on the y-axis it would be also three and if both of them are used then we look into the diagonal direction and point from zero zero to three three and in order to look in different directions we are using the dx and dy values that we get from the directions list. After that, we check if the last x and last y is within the board. Imagine our x is on four, then the last x would be outside of the board and there would be no need to check or validate because we already did that when x was three. And if our current position and last x and last y are inside of the board. Then we take the value out of the cell. And then lastly, we check if the neighbored cells are equal to the value that we just saved. If this is true, we return the value and otherwise we return zero. Of course, after all the iterations are done. So let's replace the validation method inside our play column method. Here, instead of check diagonals, we will check for victory, save that. And now let's check if everything is working. Vertical is working. Our 
horizontally is working. And the diagonal validation works as well. Now our game and the series is finished. I will publish the code to this project on GitHub. If this video was helpful, hit the like button and share it. If you think this channel is worthy of support, consider subscribing. I appreciate any kind of feedback, so don't hesitate to comment down below. Also check out my social network accounts. What else can I say? Have a nice day and hopefully until the next video.